everybody. Welcome to the Great Southern Billiard Tour. Second stop of the year in Goldsboro, North Carolina, Fast Eddie Sports Grill and Billiards. And we are underway. This should make for an exciting finals right here. We've got a double A player against an A player. It'll be an 11 9 to race. Mike Fuller, who's at the table, has won the lag. Uh, he'll have the first break. It is alternate the break format. Rack your own balls. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The Great Southern Billiard Tour. This is the second stop of the year. Shannon's Tour. Yeah, we'll be on. It seemed like, like, again, like we was talking last match, it seems like. Uh, 2010 just went so fast it was incredible. I'll tell you what, I started playing on this tour back in, I want to say June or July of this past year, and I played in quite a few events. Uh, it did seem like it went quite fast. Uh, it does when you stay busy and you got events every weekend and stuff like that. Yeah, it's very busy. Well, this could be the this Man, is, you got, can't ask for better than that, really. This is a true double elimination tournament also, so Mike Fuller coming from the one-loss side will have to beat Danny Mastermaker twice in order to win the event. And, you know, uh, oh, wow. Went a little far. Danny Mastermaker is the one that put Mike Fuller to the one-loss side earlier today. Really? Beat him uh, nine games to uh, three. Danny's playing good. Uh, actually, uh Danny's played several events with us in the last two or three years, and uh, at the last tournament he played in, he got to the finals and finished second to Sydney champion. Yeah, he actually defeated him the uh, first match of the finals. Look uh, at this. Now, this should prove to I know they both really want to win. I know Danny really, really wants to win this. Yes, and he I has think the this edge. Would be his, I think this would be his biggest event he's ever won, and, uh, you know, it'd make me proud to know that a young player like that would – you know, want to win the tournament so bad and have a tour stop. But he's a good little player, man. He's improved he sure a lot. Is. He plays hard, got good etiquette at the table. Uh, yes, he does. And he's a good little player. All of those guys from out there around the Richmond area play good. Chris Bruner and Larry over there playing Sam. Chris didn't get to make it down this time. Uh, actually, uh, Sam and Larry are done playing. Now uh, oh, Steve they? Page is going to play Larry. Uh, Larry didn't like his uh, like the game with Sam. Sam beat him. Uh, Sam uh, beat him out of uh, – it was only a couple games. But it was a battle. And uh, Well, you know as well as I do, they've been playing for a better portion day, of the yeah. evening, you know, uh, afternoon and evening. <coughs> Now, uh, well, you can look at you can just watch Danny, man. He is zoned out. This kid is playing to win now. Well, I'm Alvin with Inside Pool Magazine, and I'm sitting next to one of the greatest players that I've ever seen, Shannon Dalton. Oh, no, that wasn't one of the greatest mo uh, plays I've ever seen. And also David King's joining us. Yeah, Alvin, we really appreciate you guys coming out and doing all this hard work for us, you and JR. There's a lot of hours sitting over here behind these computers in two days. People don't really realize, you know, what all goes into putting on a show like this, but there's a lot to it. I mean, right now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six laptops going. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Well, three laptops and two, you know, I guess you would call this a portable PC, two portable PCs. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, just being in these moments here make it all worth it, sitting next to you doing commentary on a great match in the finals in the warm weather in North Carolina. Boy, it was a nice day today. Man, Beautiful. it was nice, like 52, 53 degrees, gorgeous. You know, we've been unseasonably cold. I'm from about five hours down the road, you know, yeah. in Greenville, South Carolina. But the whole South is, you know, like we just got bombarded <laughs> last week. We were stuck in Atlanta after the first – uh, after the very first tourney. Well, guys, as soon as the uh, Derby City's over with, we'll be right back in action at Conyers, Georgia. And then from there, we'll be in Bristol, Tennessee. Well, I'm so happy to get that uh, stop there at Borderline Billiards there. That'll be a great, great tournament, I believe. If you guys get a chance, go on to <clears throat> greatsouthernbilliardtour.com and check out our... Uh, a schedule of events coming up. We're already booking tournaments all the way up through the summer. 
So we're going to have you guys a bunch of stops to play on again this year. But especially any of you guys, uh, you know, that's kind of a new area to us there at Borderline Billiards in Bristol, Tennessee. That's Janet Atwell, the, the, she's on the WPBA tour and been a veteran out there for a long time. And we really appreciate Janet giving us a chance to get on there and uh, do her room proud. We're going to do everything we can to make that a great event. And I'm sure it will be. Wow, Mike just got a really bad roll there. Yeah, he did. That's a bad kiss. When you get kissed like that and go on the side, that is extremely unlucky. Well, there he goes back to his chair. Well, again, I expect nothing less than a war. I mean, you know, we had it last match in the semifinals you come, you know, and I would expect nothing less here. I'll be honest with you, though. I think that uh, Mike's going to have to play a little better this set than he did last set to survive because, he, you know, he survived. Sure he come from the, uh, the loser from side. The, the very depths of that last match to get in. Danny has uh, been playing awesome. I'm curious to see, I hope Danny can handle this pressure because boy, I know he wants to win so, so bad. Oh yeah, he's been, are we starting yet? Are we starting yet? Yeah, we starting on, yet? For the he's just a little over 20 years old. And I mean, oh, this yeah. would be a big win for him and a pretty good payday. Yep, he's 22 years old actually, plays great. Makes very few errors that I see, real bad things. See, that, okay, that, well I'll just what, shut my that's, mouth. That's then. what scares me a little bit right there. I just don't know. I will just shut I'm my mouth. Hoping he can handle the heat. He kind of hit settle that. in. It's going to be a little nervy for the first game or two, but I think he'll settle in and do just fine. He hit that a little hard into that side pocket. You really got to just roll those balls up in there. I don't care what the position is. Don't go for the shot then if you got to jam it. Okay, well he just basically, wow, Mike's shaking his head. Going back to his seat. He's... Oh, look, he's looking at the floor. That's not good psychological mood to be in at the beginning of the match. Looks like Mike's got a little stiffness going on over there. Oh, yeah. Well, Danny ought to feel fortunate. I mean, you know, he got away with a big error there and got back to the table. Yeah, I think he's got a duck here. Hit a little hard. Opening rack. No, no, he's got he's got one. That's right. I'm gonna change my title no, it's here. One nothing, Mike Fuller. Okay. Trying to keep this everything running here. You know, I was talking to Mike Fuller. Uh Tell me how impressed I was with his comeback win in his last match after being uh, stuck so much. And he said he's really going to bear down and try his hardest, that he really wants a victory under his belt. And so does Danny. I know that. Just I talk to Danny uh, about every day. Now, both wow. of these cats are wanting to win, I can tell you that. Right. Now, I'm trying to remember if Mike has won an event. He's played a lot, but no, I, I don't believe he I has. I don't think he has won an event. I can ask Marge and be sure. Marge. His spot. Well, he has miscued again, but it's going to work out to his favor. Yeah, at least he hit the ball. Uh, Mike informed me earlier he has not won an event. I know he's been, I know he's been a runner-up, but I was trying to remember if he had won one or not. Let's see what had happened was here, uh, an event. He defeated Sam on the winner's side and lost the, the second match. And lost the second match. He was a runner-up someplace. Also, I can't. We have so many events, David. Honestly, and truly, oh, you, you it are correct. A blur to me. You are quite correct, Shannon. <clears throat> um, but I talk to Danny Mastermaker. You know, at least two to three times a week. You know, just about action that's going on. And, He's a good dude. I you like know, him. You know, try to get out and go hang out and, you know. Get me in some action, where I'm, you know, around his area, and we get him in around mine. And it's good to keep track of con contacts. How far is Richmond from here? About two hundred miles. Two and a half hours. Not too bad of a stretch. Okay, he made a nice little nervy shot there. I had to roll that ball in with inside English. I'm looking forward to that Richmond tournament this next year. 
That was I'm a lot of fun. I'm hoping to get one up there. I've not been able to get in touch with the boy that. Uh, Thomas. Yeah, Thomas. He it's was great his, room. Yeah, it's a, I've had Thomas there before, but he was on a snow skiing trip, and I tried to get in touch with him about a week or so ago. But Nine I would think deposited. we'll get back to Midlothian. Midlothian. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but. I know it's a very high-end suburb of Richmond is what it is. The very strange name. The Dorsey family, they're great people Dorsey's, too. Dorsey's, that's right. Yeah, they were. They treated JR and I really well. They're great people to work with, very easy, nice room, good food, everything you can name. And uh, I think Max Everly was there with Inside Pool too during that event. Old Mad Max, shout out. Well, this is the finals, everyone. Hey, Marge. Marge, you get a chance to? I want you to show my appreciation. Take a look at this layout. This is more of your typical nine ball layout here. 24.28 miles per hour on the brake speed, guys. Uh, it's a nice little pop. Everything's been pretty consistent, you see, from about mid 23s. There's 125. Huh. Well, I'm looking at. Uh, Possible shot in the side. Mm, no, I don't think he can make it in the side. He's probably going to have to go up table with it or play some kind of interesting safety, which he just very well may do. Tell you what, I believe he's shooting at this ball, Shannon. Yeah, that ball going aside, he should shoot at it. Yeah, nice shot. did have a shot in the side there. Kind of fell right on the 50-yard line, but this right here is going to be a key ball here. If it goes over beside the eight, I like that shot because it's a natural angle for the cue ball to go to the left there. But uh, in the left it, corner pockets, either not one good. It, uh, yeah, the left corner's fine. Its main thing is concentrate on making this ball. If you shoot it in the left corner pocket, you'll still have a shot in the three beside the four. But I believe he's going to the left pocket beside the eight. This is a this is a shot of the rack for sure. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, he uh, need to make those. Look here, look here. Does he set up a combo? Let's go to the other side of the table. I think he does. Yeah, he's got a combo. But it's a little off angle. The deuce is down, you know, kind of yep. down even with a seven a little bit. It's the two ball is going to go flying around. Now the two ball will go high. It'll go at the natural angle that it leaves a seven at. Should push it over in between the first and second diamond. Well, he wants to make sure he doesn't come down and get himself hooked by the nine. Yeah, just bounce up by the nine. Oh, nope. look at this. Play a Sold out. And, uh, but I tell you what, for a double-A caliber player, that's not a good shot. That was a bad that's shot. That's an elementary man. shot, really, just a roll down behind the ball. Well, he's running back to his chair. Where I think he likes – I think he's ra he'd rather be watching this match now. The way it's looking. But it's still real early. Dead center. Sure did hit that pretty. Like a nice cup of buttermilk. Extra is. churned. <laughs> I think uh, Shannon would have said there. Tanny's got a great stroke. Got a real good fundamentals. I don't know if he's going to like this too well. Okay, he turned out all right. It, Things are just rolling his way. It's it kind of appeared that he was going to come up underneath the seven ball there and possibly could have got froze to it, and he would not have liked it. Got to be careful here. This is a big shot. I mean, I'm glad to see him. You know, a lot of young players you won't see really take their time like he's doing right here, like getting down and getting up off the ball, but he knows how important this is. It's important to make all those – he fell Correct right on moves. the 50-yard line again, but I think he'd be all right. I think he can cut this ball in. Yeah, he's got a nice angle to 
unfortunately, he's got to play the shot, but he's got a nice angle to go to the short rail he's and got, back up. He's got more angle than he wanted. Yeah, uh, he'll he go to the side rail if he cuts this ball in. He'll hit the side rail and come around three rails probably. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, where are you going? <laughs> it just keeps getting tougher, guys. Here's, here's the one that counts. Now, this is a really small pocket for this side pocket shot. Yeah, this is not the shot you're dreaming of, but it's very uh, makeable. I yes, think you'll make this ball. Just roll it in. Nothing fancy. Just, yep. make, just make the ball. Oh, he's taking a little extra time there. I don't like that. Yeah, no good. See, he missed. No good. Can't double second guess during your last couple strokes. He missed it well. He left a pretty tough shot. Believe me, this promise. This is not a hanger. Oh, man. I hate coming to the table with this shot. Mike shoots pretty straight. You got to go for here. it. You got to go for it. I can't but I'm really surprised. Did he that, do that on yeah, play he, of safety? He, he played safety on, on purpose, but I don't. You like going at that ball? I think a player of his caliber is supposed to make that ball. Yes, I do. Pocket that sucker. We'll see if he played the right and move, if he though. do make it, if he goes for it and makes it, you know, he punishes the guy for making a mistake. Right, which is no psychological. Good. Yeah. Let's see where this ends up. If it gets past the side. Nope, he's going to have to play a bank. Yeah, he's got a bank. But again, now he's got to go for yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, he's supposed to make. He's even money to make this 90 ball. out of 100 of these. Yeah, and it's all about just taking those two or three strokes instead of all this extra poking and thinking. Nice shot there by Mike Fuller. Take the lead in this match, two games to one. Here we go back to, again, to early mistakes early in the match. You know, we've yep. seen how easily those can cost you. Especially in alternating break format. Which you've developed quite an interesting system here, Shannon, in your tournaments. I'm sure it's from years and years of practice and thinking what's the best situation for everyone. Well, we just wanted to, you know, come up with our own handicap system, something that nobody else had done, and uh, make it fair for all levels and all skill players, you know, all skill of players. It's, you know, except touring pros, of course, but anything in the amateur level, we can pretty well, pretty well accommodate you. Well, they go to 13. Uh, well, the only event that they're even allowed to play in, period, uh, a pro, is the Tour Championship. And, yeah, they go to 13. And you see how tough that still. turned out last year. One of our regular tour members, Brian White, won the event. Actually, yeah. on the exact table they're playing on right now. Well, with the caliber players that showed up just for this tournament here, I mean, this wasn't one of your bigger turnouts. And uh, the caliber of players, uh, these guys going to 13 would still be – you know, you can't guarantee that they're going to even uh, score for, money. For sure not going to, going to 13. Absolutely. I believe I played in it myself. That 13 is a long haul playing alternate to break. Wow. Just letting everybody know that break speed out there was 23.11 miles per hour. And you mentioned back to the tour championship and about how tough that is for uh, the top tour pros out there. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Alex Olinger, yep, uh, Alex. from back in Ohio, defeated Johnny Archer twice in this tournament. Uh, and Johnny didn't cover the spread once, beat him even. But he had to go both to nine. He had to go to nine. Alex played real good, man. Alex is a good player, good person too. You know, out, yeah. of, Dayton, out of Dayton, Ohio, he's a good player. He's funny too, man. Funny, he's good really guy. funny. I call him the gentle giant. What I call yeah. him. Very knowledgeable for oh, as young wow. as he Danny. is. Danny. Alex just recently uh, had a uh, an older model diamond pool table put in his house while well, watching jump it is probably a it, it's not quite as tight as the table in uh conyers georgia but it's very close that's a tough one then it yeah that's exactly what he wanted boy danny's gonna have to quit making those simple mistakes guys i don't know if it's a little bit of nerves or what it is but he's gonna have to do something to get going can anything bad happen from playing on a tight table all the time no, not really. I mean, it'll change the way you play a little bit. You don't – I mean, you can't play a – of course, you play these loose tables. You shoot at a lot more shots on a looser pocket table. Okay, so Def that – Defense comes in a lot more on a tight table. Yeah. But I think there's such thing of getting a table too tight, too, you know, where you can't right. even execute Anything. normal shots, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> I think if a man really comes with a tough shot and hits it, you know, 95% perfect, it ought to go. I, I agree 100%. 
Mike Fuller is going to take advantage of that little mistake there by Danny Mastermaker. And we're, while we're digressing, he's a uh, um, – well, maybe I'm wrong. What is going on See there, the guys? cue jump all off and him just flop over. He was totally not stable. Jump straight in the air. And a Danny, but he needs, to, he needs to bear down and make this ball. <coughs> yep. Big ball here. Oh, yeah. Looks like he's going back up table. No, nope, he banked it short if it's hard enough to go two. Look at this. Is it hard enough to go two? Maybe he was playing. Look at it roll oh, off. Wow. Got a little curve on him there at the end. Wow. See Ooh. it roll off? Yeah, it come off just a little bit. Just enough to hit the point. Sure did. It was going right at the hole, too. All right, so it's he got it a well, very. A, Mike's getting away with a lot of stuff here. Whew, he is. Even right there again, look at that. No excuse for even being close to that side. Three games to one, favor of Mike Fuller. Stay out and watch it if it was real light. You're right. You're right. Good okay. points. No matter if this goes two matches, it's going to still be 10:30 or 11 o'clock before it's over with. Well, last Shannon night playing down best. to the final 12 was uh, a very, very good idea. I think we're going to try to do that a lot more. It just depends on how big a field you got, you know, and how many tables you've got to work with at each room. We are talking about the time that of night that it is for the finals to start. It's about nine o'clock right now, so. Prime time, man. Prime time action. Yeah, anybody wanted to come out and watch the finals are welcome to. And then, uh, you know, that way if they got to get up and go to work in the morning too, don't put them going to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's tough when a guy has to get up at 7 o'clock. Miss cute. And that's where uh, Alvin and myself were talking about this earlier, along with uh, Rodney Strickland. Make sure you take a look at your tip. Oh, yeah. At your work, at, at your tool that's making you this money and yep. winning you these events that very periodically. Yeah, it don't cost much to run a tip tapper over it real quick. No, it does not. It costs a lot more to lose the match. That could be your, I mean, I've, you know, that could be it for you. You never know. I don't particularly care for that shot. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's a guy, I mean, he, he can draw this ball back off the side rail, but he didn't get where he wanted to get, I can tell you that. He's going to roll with two rails, it looks like, come out. He what a good. shot this is. Nice force follow there. Absolutely. And that takes a lot of heart to go ahead and shoot a shot like that when you're you know, that little bit of an angle he had. Well, Danny, if Danny's not careful, if he don't put some heat on Mike, he's going to be able to, he'll fire them all in like that because he's going to be freewheeling. You got to keep pressure on a guy. If not, you let his arm get loose. He's not scared, there you about, go. not scared about doing nothing wrong. You got to make him feel like there's a penalty for a mistake. Well, that's what happened to me at the uh, warm-up tournament that uh, you had here before the tour championship when I played Larry Neville. I made a few mistakes, and he made me pay dramatically for it. That's the way it is. But the better the better players you play against, the more you pay for your mistakes. You know, Larry and I have had some uh, close matches, believe it or not, uh, back when he was living in uh, Wisconsin. When I used to go to Chicago and play in a lot of uh, tournaments, uh, Tom Carabas's pool room and Gray's Lake. And then we've played each other several times. And I think I've, done, I've defeated him, I think, once out of <laughs> maybe the ten that we've played. But Yeah, Larry's a killer. He's 
Well, he's a tough competitor, tough, man. Tough, tough. We actually live in the same hometown now. When he, he lives in Easley, and I live in Simpsonville. They're about 20 minutes apart. But Larry works a full-time job, too, but I'll tell you what, that guy there's got a lot of talent. He might have the uh, – you talking about the tooth? Talking about the truth, the tooth. Oh. Mater. <laughs> he's an amazing, amazing player, man. I think without a doubt he's got the most powerful stroke he's uh, that's ever That's exactly been. what I was getting ready to say. You beat him, though, Shannon, here at the Tour Championship in nine ball, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, you guys I mean, played the nine ball. Times. Dude, I mean, you, you know, beat it's a, him. It's a war every time we play. And you he played was in the playing. nine ball and then the one pocket right back oh, to back and, and he, beat him. It wasn't David. It wasn't he playing like a, ma like a maniac. He usually does play like a maniac. He and plays Shannon, perfect. you put the smack down on him, dude. He's That's got awesome. He's got a, he's got that a rise was to the red, occasion. Face, that head, and everything. Shannon was, was red, red too. You got, you got a rise <laughs> to the occasion. Shannon was sweating and watched the match. He was he wasn't having a very easy time with Larry. That's You're, for sure. Nobody is going to have an easy time with Larry Neville. I, I promise sure you that. I don't care who you are. Wow. If you do beat him, anytime you got two champions playing, you know, even if you win, you're going to be scarred up. Oh yeah. You gotta know you've been in the tussle. Yeah, you were you were fought hard on that one. I'll tell you one thing, I hate to say this for Danny, but you can just tell by his demeanor and the chair and stuff, man, he's gotta get something going. He's had two or three missed opportunities. Yeah. You know, when you give a game away, it's really costing you at least two. One you mark up for you and one you mark up for them. And any the way you look at it, that's people say, Oh, I give away a game. That's not true. You're giving away two every time. Yep. At least. And, uh, and our game is our match is uh, four games to one in favor could, of Mike Fuller. It could Fuller. easily be, you know, 3-2 uh, Danny's favor. Danny's not paying any attention to the table. He's, he's, uh, no, he's Danny right now probably feels like he wants to crawl under a rock. He's going to get another opportunity here. He probably is going to be hooked. I think Mike will play the four behind the five and the yes. cue ball to the left rail down here by the eight. That's what I would expect him to do. Yeah, well, that sounds like a great shot. Great shot there. Left a gap, though. Yeah, he did. He could almost even go at the side pocket if he wanted to. It's a tough shot, but the four does go. I mean, you got to look at it like this. Even though it's a tough shot, it's better than what you should have had. You should have been kicking. And what's the safety, even if he wanted to play safe? Well, there's a, I don't even see one. All he can do is try to come back between the six and the eight with the cue ball. Thin the four real thin and maybe go around, but I tell you what, there's not a real, real good safety even here. No, he's going to go with this side pocket. I would much rather sell out on a he good shot. shot. He yeah, he did. Shot. I would much rather sell out on a <laughs> an offensive shot than I would a defensive one any day of the week. No, I had to. Well, being that that was a very difficult shot, he got rough shape. And uh, he's going to have to continue to fight to get this rack. He needs to, it's what he needs to do, though, is get through one of these tough racks and get him some momentum going, get yes. him some confidence going behind him. Should he? Does he tuck the five behind the nine? No, he, he goes, tries to run out here. Back cut. Yeah, just cut it over in the corner, and cue ball comes back across. See, that's why I don't like that shot. That notorious back cut, man. It doesn't go where you think it's going to go. If you're in the finals of a tournament, though, and you've made it this far, you're supposed to be able to execute those shots. That's the hardest shot, though, I think. What do you, don't you think those really, those back everybody's, cuts? Everybody's got their own hardest shot. You I know see them I mean? missing it, though. Everybody uh, misses it. There's a, I don't think one shot's no particularly no harder than the other. It just depends. Everybody's got their shot that they really don't like, such as me. My shot that I hate the worst is a combinations. Really? Yeah, I don't like to shoot. I try to avoid them at all costs. Mm. Yeah, because bad things can happen there. I might have a good shot there, a good angle to come down for the eight. I see a lot of missed combinations, too, for sure. That's somebody where, like, uh, Corey likes combinations. He's pretty good at them. Corey's a real good combination player. Yeah. Johnny Arch is a great combination player. Yep. And I'm not saying I can't make them, but uh, right. if, I, if I can, I'd rather shoot a little simple cross corner bank or a little simple cross side than I had make an off angle combination, I can tell you that. Oh, yeah. Oh, we know whose phone that is. Marge, you want to get that, somebody to get that phone? And just like that, five games to one wow. in favor of Mike Fuller. Five to one. Slide it just like you do yours. I don't want to answer it. 
It works just like yours. Is that a skipper? <laughs> well, he knows you didn't want to talk to him. So. <laughs> well, we're busy. How can I talk to any commentator? It's a little you tough can. for me to do. That's a great excuse. No. <laughs> well, I, can't, I can't do anything right now anyway. You could fill him in, though, if you have time and your schedule over there. Conference. Conference call. Well, back at the ranch, the uh, – The master of the this set, I think, Mike Fuller is going to go ahead and get a little more comfortable and pop him in another one of them nice and pretty breaks he likes to do. Ooh, Ooh, two he got fortunate. Going a little bit with the cut break here. And to no avail. Yeah, he didn't get very fortunate there. I think the rack might have been unfrozen on accident. Not sure what happened. Danny's not happy camper though, stepping up to look at this shot. Does he go airborne? No, he don't. He'll probably push out here. If he can't hit the one, I expect him to push out. Yeah, it's too hard to land on the other side of the seven, even if he wanted to do something funny with it. That's a really nice cue he's got there. That is a nice cue. Tim Scruggs. Yes, Timmy Scruggs. It's like uh, Corey Duell's old cue, the one that uh, he lost in Japan. Very, very similar. It's the same cue. So a couple players. Uh, is that what happened to Corey's cue? He lost it in Japan. Uh, remember that 100 million yen tournament that was over there a long time ago that Efren won? I think so, yeah. Yeah, he uh, lost that cue over there. Lost it, or someone stole it, or uh, someone's not. Someone probably stole it. Uh, now, uh, Randy Stewart, that uh, from from, uh, from Toledo, Ak Akron, 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 Ohio. That's uh, my old hometown. Has two of them. Yeah, yeah, two of these cues. Two of these cues here. Uh, Randy's a big cue connoisseur. He loves Tim Scruggs cues. Mm -hmm. I know Randy. Funny character, Randy Stewart is. <laughs> if he can't make you laugh, nobody can. Yeah, he's something else. I'll tell you, another great cue to hit with is a Richard Black cue. That's one Richard of the better, Black. one of the better hitting cues yeah. I've, I myself have played with. I play with the Sean cue though. Your old cue company there, Shannon. Yeah, I played with Sean for a long time. Good company. Excellent cue. I think, without a doubt, the best production cue made. By far. That cue hits like a maniac, man. The butt. The butt is so solid on those. It's like a high school dream. <laughs> nice nice shot. shot there. Oh, well, now for your next trick. Well, why don't you reintroduce us here, uh, David, when you get a chance. Great shot. Oh, look at this. Oh. oh, you don't have to yet when you're ready. Well, it's time to put a line on the side. Wow. Wow. Okay, guys. I'm hearing you guys are speechless. What do you think about that? I actually didn't see it. I was reading the online oh. chat over here going on, trying to keep up, making sure if anybody gotcha. asked any questions, what happened? He snapped. Uh, Fuller made a mistake, and Danny did the 4-9 combo and ended that rack real quick. Our score is now five games to two in favor to of Mike Fuller. Going. I'm glad to see him win a game. Yeah, for sure. And for those of you out there that are just joining us, uh, we are coming to you live from Goldsboro, North Carolina. The second stop on Shannon Dalton's Great Southern Billiard Tour. Uh, you're uh, being joined uh, by actually three commentators uh, tonight. Usually it's just uh, Alvin Nelson and myself, David King, and uh, we have a special guest, uh, the tour host, uh, Shannon Dalton, is in with us. I want to thank him for uh, coming along and joining us in the booth. I know he's got a lot to do, and 
So we'll take some time out of his uh, schedule to join us here. We're watching the uh, final match uh, between Danny Mastermaker and Mike Fuller. It's an 11 9 race. Uh, Mike Fuller is uh, going to 11. Danny Mastermaker is going to 9. Uh, Danny won the hot seat match yep. and will have to be defeated twice that for Mike Fuller to uh, win this tournament. Uh, yeah, they're saying thanks to Shannon out on the tour on the uh, chat. Absolutely. And it's saying where in Nashville is the tournament, Shannon? Well, Lethal Weapon, I appreciate the compliment very much. Uh, we do do what we can to keep pool alive here. I wish I could take it nationwide. I've had several opportunities to go all over the country and run tournaments, but, you know, honestly and truly, you just travel so much and it gets yeah. into it. I mean, just where just it's not feasibly possible to take it nationwide. I wish it was because I think we've got a good enough format and a good enough system going Absolutely. to where it could go nationwide, but it's – just the way that pool is right now, it's just uh, basically impossible. You can only travel so much. Yeah, and you can only you got family and stuff at home, Shannon. You got to oh, deal yeah. with, don't you? Oh yeah. That you love to spend time with. So, you, Shannon can't travel. We're gone, we're gone a lot. There's no doubt. Yeah. Whereas uh, a single person like me, I can travel as much as I want. I don't have any uh, yeah. kids. Yeah. I. Have, if you're on the road, you're on the road. Big I don't deal. even own a plant because I can't stay home long enough to even take care of a plant. <laughs> don't even own a plant. I can't. Ha I've tried to have plants, yeah. and, and I'm they not. They do have home. those automatic feeders out. I am not. I couldn't even give it. They just wither. Only you would know about an automatic feeder for yep, a plant. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not holding enough to take care of a plant. <laughs> the plant doesn't require the right <laughs> ones. When you could buy a cactus, so that it, you water about once every six months. Yeah, my house is empty right now. <laughs> it's crickets going on. All right, Mike Fuller. He's uh, while we're digressing and telling stories, he's running out. We couldn't do this without J.R. Calvert and Inside Pool Magazine. Everybody, stop over to InsidePoolMag.com and get a subscription from uh, J.R. and. Sally's back home watching over the chat, doing the brackets. I want to thank her too, Sally Timko. Check her poolplayerexcuses.com website out, please. An awesome Just like that, towel. it's uh, six games to two in favor that of Mike That is a Mike real cute Fuller. towel that Sally come up with. Oh, uh, yeah. The excuse towel, that's pretty neat. Pool uh, Shane, player you have excuses. a question out there. What is it? A uh, player would like to know what type of cue you use, what weight, yeah, and let's at, talk what about tip, your and what brand. Talk play about with that the Andy Gilbert custom cue. There's pictures of it on the cue gallery on AZ Billiards. Uh, play with the Andy Gilbert custom cue. It's a starburst cue. It's uh, all gaboon, ebony, ivory, and silver. Uh, it's about 19.2. It's about a 1260 shaft with about a 15 to 16 inch consistent taper that goes all the way back. Kamui black super soft tip. That's an amazing cue. Yes, it is. Very amazing. One of the nicer that I've ever seen. It's got a cannon inscribed on it. Or what do they call that when they do that? Do what now? Scripture work. Scrimshaw, yeah. Scrimshaw. It's got a cannon scrimshaw. It's, it's really nice. I'll have it at the Derby City. If anybody's Sweet. up there and want to see it, just let me know, and I'll be glad to show it to you. may put it out on exhibit a little bit there, too, for Andy. I know Andy's coming I in. I think on. we're probably going to try go. to do a what's in the case. We're, we're going to do a what's in the case with Inside Pool. That would be great. Might have a new interview girl there. Do that. Is Sam not doing anything for you guys anymore? No, we're actually going in a new direction with uh, – with some of the girls. We'll be uh, letting everybody know about that sometime soon. But we got some got some really smart new interview girls possibly showing up. So well, Danny's made tuned. a nice little shot here. Uh, very reasonable that he could get out from here. Especially if the four goes by the five, but even if it doesn't, he can just come straight back across. I think Danny ought to get out from here. 
He's just been a little off, like Look at shots this. like this right here. I mean, he's just coming out of his seat cold. He's not being rock solid. I don't know if I'm sitting around or what it's from, but I mean, I've seen so, him play a lot of matches. And it's that age. It's a good shot. Good shot. Kept it under control. Rolled it in nice. He could be um, losing interest. Uh, younger guys. <laughs> Younger guys can get lose interest easier than older guys, more experienced players. Got some funny people in the chat. I'll tell you that. Very entertaining uh, format these live streams, aren't they? I can say this. Got a lot of fans out there, Shannon. I'll tell you that much. Myself and uh, Dave King included, right, Dave? Absolutely. It's and Jr. Trying to watch the trying to watch the tournament. Trying to read the chat. Yep. Uh, we know Jr. is a big fan of yours too. Tried to answer a text from Alex Olinger. <laughs> Jay Hardis like to turn the whole computer table over there when he got up. That would have been good. <laughs> Got to get to that break yeah. speed. So our score is What's now. What's going on, Kenny? I see you're on there now, buddy. Yeah, I'm really a scratch golfer. Thank you very much. Can't do anything. I tell him I'll call him later. I'm commentating. Hey, what's the uh, score there, Dave? 6-3, or, or is that correct? 6-3 is correct. 6-3. Okay, I uh, get uh, a little sidetracked with running the production. Doing pretty good, Kenny. Did you all snow ever melt over there in Asheville? Snow. Ha! <laughs> snow. Yeah, when I got to JR's house, there was so much snow. I couldn't even get up his driveway. It's working on it. You guys had over a foot, didn't you, total? It's been brutal in the north, I'll tell you, with the snow this year. I really don't see how you guys put up with it. I really Dude, don't. I JR told the... me he come out and couldn't find his car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a, I couldn't deal with that. I uh, didn't see the sun for nearly two weeks almost for more than five minutes. We all should just move to Alaska and get it over with. Go up there with Sarah Palin. Weeks, no sun. It's brutal. We love being down here in North Carolina, though, having a pig picking. It's a good time. And here at Fast Eddie's, great pool hall. Tell want to thank what, them. Danny can hold it together right here. He's back in the match now. This is a great place to hold one of your tournaments, Shannon, Fast Eddie's. That's where we've done the Tour Championship at the Carolina Open slash Tour Championship Big out for room. 2010, and we're going to do it. I think plans is already in the making to do it again here for this year. Yeah, Fast Eddie's is a huge pool room. Pretty neat name, too, you know, named after yep. Fast Eddie Felsen, of course. And they got a guy named Eddie Pate that works here. Yeah. He is Fast Eddie of Fast Eddie's. And the owner, Bucky. They bought us a big pig dinner last night. There's something else. All these guys are good. Mike's over here talking to the main manager now, Mike Frowan. Marge is, I mean. Yep. Uh, good people, good people to work with. They spent probably $400 on the food here for everybody yesterday. We were talking about it last match, but here in the finals, I uh, want to let everybody know, yeah, that Bucky did real good for the Great Southern Billiard He's Tour. trying to get all the way below this seven, and I'll tell you what, it's going to be real close. Get down there for him. Give him a chance. Take a look at the other angle. I think he goes rail first. Yeah, he goes rail first, but if the six doesn't go, if the six is froze to the nine, you can't tell, you know, from. Can he break it out going got. off the rail? Well, you would have to kick it and then draw it, and then that runs into a lot of funny things could happen real easy to miss the ball. He hit it good. If the six goes, he's in business here. 
just can't tell, you know, we're about 15, 20 feet away from the table watching it on these big monitors. But there's certain little shots just like this one you can't tell, but it, he's shooting, he's, he's been overlooking at it like it'll go. Gonna hit high. Mm. Mm. Gotta let it get away from him, boy, that's not good. So you guys will do basically the same thing I am. Just go home and pack up and go straight to Derby, won't you? That's it. All of us. <laughs> Everybody. I think that's what half the country's doing. Yep. We're going to pack in the Horseshoe Casino over there in Elizabeth, Indiana. Yes, sir. That's a humongous place. Boy, it is, isn't it? Yes. After two or three days of it, my legs has got cramps Man. in them from walking from the room back down there. It is a long turn. We marked it. It's over a quarter of a mile. From your room, if you're like up on the 10th floor, it's like a quarter of a mile from there, the entrance of the tournament Ooh. room. And about 10 miles into town if you want to get anything. Yeah, you need to have what you, you need to pretty well have what you're going to get because also we've had a major snowstorm there every single year we've had one. Oh, yeah. Largest ice storm two years ago in, in that part of the country's history there. Remember where everything was shut down? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I think that's part of the fun of it, though. I don't even think it bothers people if you get snowed in there because no. they got good food. They're not going to run out of very much. Yeah. You want to bring your, your uh, same kind of money you'd take to Vegas, though. That's a very expensive place. My best advice is bring a cooler. Yep, I would strongly suggest that to bring anybody. A bring a cooler with packed full of the, anything you want because you can't go back to town very easy. Is that him? You need to take a call. You go right ahead, Shannon. You just let me know. Congratulations on closing your house, Kenny. That's awesome. I have to come up and see it as soon as it has to be after the derby, but congratulations. Oh, it looks like Lethal Weapons bringing 100 k to the derby. I hope Mike Walker goes to the Derby. I'd love to see him going nuts there. Who might Lethal Weapon be, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> now you want to know. Shannon's interested in knowing uh, who's the mark. Who is the mark? Oh, and we are not getting an answer. All I'm seeing is crickets. And meanwhile, Mike Fuller just played a really nice shot on the one ball. You'll know soon enough, Shannon. Nice. Good one. And I'm sure we probably already know each other, but holler at me when you get there and let me know who you let me know who I was talking to anyway. You got action. <laughs> I'm sure uh, that would be interesting. We really enjoy everybody out in the chat. It makes these events a lot of fun. It's really one of the best parts of doing these live streams is getting to enjoy it with everybody out there. Yeah, I like the chat. It's a, it makes it a lot more fun when the we've people got the are, chat going on. The people are super cool. Not a lot of arguing and stuff like on some of these boards where it's just I don't, you know, complaining and I don't like you, you don't like me. The, these streams are pretty cool. People are people are uh, reasonable. I like to stay out of the drama in the pool room, and that's all you really get at a lot of these places and websites is a bunch, you know, a lot of drama. Well, Mike ended up getting out of line some kind of way here. I don't really. He shot at it. I don't believe that's going to make it, boys. No. Tell you what, we could see a repeat of mass match uh, <clears throat> with a guy that was way down come back. There is hardly any delay for this stream. I mean, we are like. Yeah, it's spot on. I mean, real. I'm watching it. My eyes are flickering back and forth, and I mean, it is dead on. <laughs> it's just a few seconds out. So. Kenny, what part of Asheville is your guy's house in?
Score is six to three, Mike Fuller. South, so you're gonna be closer to Spartanburg. Sure do remember pro, Take, pro billiards. Taking care of business here. In Orlando. I'll put it together. A little bit slow right now. But like I said, if I don't, it ain't no big deal. Uh, just holler at me when we get to the derby. Might be able to do something. Okay, we're back. Danny Mastermaker gonna break here. GreatSouthernBilliardTour.com. Go get a t-shirt off there. Shannon's got some new awesome t-shirts. Six four now. Six to four. Favor of Mike Fuller. If Mastermaker can win this game right here, we'll have an even race to five going. For the cash. The cash. This is the finals. There is no tomorrow. Is no tomorrow. <coughs> derby, 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 that's coming up. Look at this. He's going to leave him right in front of the hole, Shannon. Wow. Yeah, if the deuce is froze, though, it's a really hard shot. I apologize about my absence there, uh, Cyber World. Uh, this is uh, one of your loyal hosts back with you, uh, David King. Uh, King David. I would love here the three where the three's at and everything. Just try to make it get back down the table and get a shot on it. That's a great last name, David. Well, he popped it. He hit it good. Look how good he hit this ball. Hit wow. it great. That's as good as it can be done right there, guys. Boom. It's still a pretty tricky out, but I tell you what, he's done good over the biggest hill. He's alive. I think he might be settling down a little bit. I think his nerves was bothering him a little bit from the start. Yep. Got to get oxygen to the brain, too. That's a real critical thing. I see a lot of players take a deep breath after they miss. Well, he's going to go in right into this uh, this nine ball, I think, unless he puts a, no, a serious can, draw on I it. I think just uh, like a little slide draw over there to slide. the middle diamond. Yeah, I was. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, real touchy shot there. Now he's on. Uh, uh, he's got a bunch of options here, though. Who he's got some problems now. I think he's going up table here. Yeah, he might just play safe right behind the nine. That's the shot. Just like oh, that. Goodness. Oh goodness, no rail. Well, guys. We gotta get a rail. Get to oh, the rail. come on. I think he's too worried about freezing that cue ball to the nine and jumped up a little bit. Need to make sure that he gotta make sure the first part's done first. That could be a bad mistake. Yeah, make sure it's a legal hit. Uh, we really appreciate Shannon doing the commentary with us, don't we, Dave? Absolutely. Well, we're glad to be here. Sometimes, you know, especially in the middle of the tournament, got so much going on when all the tables is going. You know, you got to make so many calls and stuff. You just so much aggravation going on. But when we get to the end like this, if I've got time, I sure don't mind at all sitting down doing it. It's great having uh, somebody that's a really knowledgeable player to be able to give us their advice. Cause, uh, yeah, it's tough for me to pull it all on my own. Me too, yeah. <laughs> Uh, mm. Just like we had Earl doing the finals two weeks ago at Fiddlesticks. I can imagine that was oh, quite comical. Amazing. That guy knows so much. 
Maybe I shouldn't have said what I said about Earl earlier, but I, I think Earl has become the Phil Helmuth of the pool world. My favorite player. <laughs> he always has been. <laughs> I'm just really glad Shannon agrees with me on that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just his personality. You nah, know? Phil Helmuth is one of the greatest poker players, if not the greatest to ever live, besides, you know, a couple of different people. He's right up there. He's like that dark guy, Barneveld. Raymond Barnavell. Do you ever see him? He's an awesome dart player. 74, 74. At, at another Mike label. Took the lead. At another level, excuse me. Mike's going to 11. Master Maker going to 9. If Mike Fuller wins the first set, we're going to go to extra innings. Yeah, we may be sitting here for a while. Maybe uh, taking a little mini break in between sets. You know, speaking of poker, they're actually, uh, they have a uh, weekly, uh, a couple times a week, a weekly uh Poker tournament uh, here. Fast Eddies. Boom. Bucky. It's a pretty fun tournament. I played in it the other night. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a good little thing. He got unfortunate on the two ball here. Kenny, what are you talking about, Dippy D there? Is he on here? Twenty-four point eight. Twenty-four point zero eight. <laughs> Do you not see the zero? I swear. I'm gonna go on. I'm trying. Um, I'm trying right there. I think it's funny. Everybody reads it. <laughs> and you're hearing the voice of J.R. Calvert in the background, the mastermind of Inside you, Pool. He's giving me a little bit of grief right now. I'll tell you what, J.R. Calvert, say hi to the crowd out here. Hello, crowd. <laughs> Burner, is that really, that's all I'm going to get. Twenty-four-eight when he was twelve. What's that? Burner said he broke twenty-four-eight when he was twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody break twenty-four point oh eight one time, <laughs> just now. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen watching, that was the voice of uh, the mastermind of this operation. Absolutely. J.R. Calvert. Yeah, and as soon as you say that, he walks away because he's a real modest guy. He don't. He's not yeah, in he the spotlight. He doesn't want to hear that. Nope, and Shannon's the same way. He doesn't like – I don't think he likes to hear when you when we're praising him. He gets a little uh, – I don't think he, – he's a modest guy, you know. Wait, about to stab that in. Uh-oh. Circus shot. Boom. <laughs> I mean, you know, he just walked up and did that with a full cue, you know, like it wasn't nothing. Circus shot. A circus shot. <laughs> he says, Ringling Brothers. Win your prize. Step up and win your prize. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Lethal Weapon says Shannon deserves a praise, and yes, he does. Oh, and we hear the better half, Marge Cooper, back there. The brains of the operation, I think. Well, I guess half the brains Boy, of the operation, I was Marge. Trying to, oh, yeah, Marge, believe me, she sure does her part on there. How many hours a week does she spend on the Great Southern Billiard Tour, do you think, Shannon? A lot. I mean, besides what we're already here, I mean, you know, we leave on Friday, come back home on Monday. That's four days a week. The other three days a week, she's either doing some kind of computer update, whether it be Facebook or, you yep. know, I mean, all the websites, our website. Yep. Always something going on, 24 hours a day. Yep, you two make a great pair, in my opinion, and I'm sure everybody else's. We're going to have a lot of fun at the Derby City Classic, I'll tell you that much. It's going to be busy. It's coming up real fast, so hold your horses because you're going to be there. 11 days, nothing but pool. Mike's got a pretty simple out here. All he's got to do is come down to the, about the middle diamond or a touch below. Seven goes straight in. Shouldn't be in a lot of trouble with this. It's laying absolutely perfect. Absolutely right. Got a little movement on his get stroke where he there. To. Yeah, you see, he had a little movement there. He may have to go up and back here. He might be able to kill it over the side rail, but he sure didn't get where he wanted to. He can go forward, right? I think he's going to use extreme left and go over to the side rail. Okay. 
Oh, yo. Wow. Walked its way right on into that pocket. Wouldn't have got away with that on a diamond for sure. No, no way. No way. That, that ball would have been back over where the eight is. And you're watching the finals. Danny Mastermaker versus Mike Fuller. This is a true double elimination. Mike's got to win two sets. Beat Danny. And he is headed the right direction. It's fixing to be 8-4, Mike Fuller. Fuller. He played a real awesome circus shot. As Shannon said there. That was the butterscotch shot. You just get up and scream butter shot, butterscotch. Like uh, our good friend Scooter likes to do. I think Chris Volmar.